everyone. My name is Hallie Quablo, and I'm a member of the Quad Education team. I want to thank you all for joining us for our webinar webinar on navigating the common application. We have two fantastic panelists here with us who are members of the Quad Education team as well and our admissions consultants. Um, we're thankful to have them here. Um, just to give you a little overview about what Quad Education is, we are a company that consults with students who are in the process of planning for the college application process and the process of applying. Um, we focus on helping students from ages 11, a sixth grade age on all the way through um, high school. And um, we focus on developing uh, candidacy, writing personal statements, building your college list, helping um, go through the common app um, or any other applications you might be applying for, interviewing kind of every part of the college application process. So we um, are here to help with. So today we're going to introduce our panelists. We'll talk about what the common application is, um, specific pieces within that that are important, talk about the who should be using the common application, step-by-step -step guide through um, the process of actually using it, and then we'll open up the floor for Q&A. So if you have questions as we go through this, feel free to pop them in the Q&A box, and we will get to all of those at the end. Um, and then we'll also be sending out a recording of this webinar within the next couple of days so you'll have access to all of the information here as well. Um, so I want to introduce Casey Smith and Anthony Grant. Um, Anthony, can you go ahead and give us a little introduction? Hello, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Anthony Grant. I'm one of the uh, admissions consultants at Quad. Uh, uh, prior to that, I've worked in uh, college ed admissions for nearly uh, uh, 15 years. I've worked uh, full-time at uh, Syracuse, uh, the, the University of Richmond, and Earlham uh, College, and I've also read applications part-time at uh, UC Berkeley. Fantastic. Thanks for being here, Anthony. Casey, um, thanks for being here as well. Can you go ahead and give us a little overview on yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um... Nice to, nice to see everybody. Um, yeah, so my name is Casey Smith. I'm an admissions consultant here at Quad. Um, in terms of admissions experience, I had done some work with the UC Berkeley MBA program um, where I interviewed prospective students. Um, I also was the admissions liaison for a couple of different student clubs there. Um, and at Notre Dame, I was a tour guide for prospective students and did a lot of work with the Illinois Association. And outside of those, I've also done a lot of um, kind of part-time mentoring, coaching um, students um, to, you know, get into the college pipeline. So yeah, it's it's great to be here. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. We'll dive right in and talk about um, what to know about the, or what is the common application? Great. I think I can take this one. Um, so the Common App, I'm sure you've heard of it already. It is um, kind of the big one out there, um, but it is basically one of the major online college application portals. Um, so you can use this to apply to multiple colleges at once, which is which is great. Before the Common App, it was really you had to sign up on each individual college website, or even further back, probably had to fill out paper forms and send them in. So Common App makes it super super easy to do everything all in one place. What that means is you can fill out some basic information just one time um, and then send in for different schools. Um, some of the underlying kind of like missions um, for the Common App is that they really try to focus on lowering the barriers to college access. So that means they can really help students and families um, access college more easily by eliminating some of those application barriers. Um, they also wanna provide support to people who support students. So think like your counselors, your teachers, um, advisors, things like that. They are really focused on a wide, diverse set of students and institutions. So there's a lot of different, um, you know, students and colleges that they work with. And then they also take a lot of the data that um, you might use in your application. And what they can do is aggregate that and provide really good insights to the different members and different colleges there. So colleges can have a better sense 
um, of the different programs that are interesting and um, just different ways to better support you. Great. Um, I think the next part, I will pass it off to Anthony. So now that uh, we have uh, provided to you a brief overview of what the uh, Common Apps purpose is and also their uh, mission, um, we are now going to uh, sh uh, sh share some things with you that you should know about the Common App B before you start. So there are over 1,000 schools across the uh, U.S. and even some outside of the uh, U.S. Uh, that will take Common App. Um, and then uh, there are, uh, and which 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 is more than the uh, 150 or so uh, schools that the uh, coalition app uh, takes. Students are able to apply to 20 schools using uh, Common App, uh, but this is not the the end of the the world. While it can be somewhat uh, difficult in trying to narrow down uh, which schools to which you will apply, 20 schools should be more than enough in order to create a diverse and a balanced uh, list. And remember that you want to apply to a range of schools, a mix of uh, target, safety, and reach uh, schools uh, that you, you would be thrilled and more than excited to attend if you are ad admitted. More than 20 schools on your final list does mean that you may want to revisit some of the things you want out of, uh, out of college and cut your list more to align with the, the, the particular needs that uh, you might have. So uh, a, a couple of those things may include uh, size of the student body, type of town or, or a city uh, a college is in, uh, certain parts of the uh, US or the world, uh, what particular academic uh, programs or particular uh, opportunities and resources such as study abroad, Office of Multicultural Affairs and uh, gender inclusive uh, housing. While Common App is a uh, convenient way uh, for you to, to apply uh, to all of your schools at once, you are still able to participate in the early decision or the or the early action uh, uh, process. Uh, you you would just have to you would just have to su submit those apps uh, earlier, and you will need uh, to complete uh, the the standard application uh, uh, pieces for a complete application, which uh, we are going to review this uh, a bit later in more depth uh, in our step-by-step -step guide uh, for, for how you'll get uh, going. So most students will use the uh, C C Common App. Uh, and uh, overall, applying uh, through Common App uh, is the right choice for, for, for most students. Uh, uh, that are, uh, who are applying to uh, four-year uh, schools, unless you prefer uh, other um, uh, other apps like uh, Coalition and, and all of the uh, schools they want to, to apply uh, uh, through it uh, as, as well. That said, uh, schools do not have a particular uh, preference uh, for, for one app over the uh, other, and so you are able to uh, choose uh, whichever uh, platform uh, you want. That said, uh, please make sure that you you check each school's uh, website, as there are some schools that are not on Common App or or on Coalition. Uh, they just have their own uh, school app. So a few examples of that might be uh, MIT, Georgetown, um, or 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 um, any of the nine undergraduate schools within the University of California uh, system. So so just keep in mind for those for those school specific apps, you may need to take more more time to to uh, to uh, apply to, to, to those uh, schools. And a wide range of schools are, are on uh, Common App, including uh, many uh, uh, top uh, schools. Um, and again, over what over 1000 uh, schools take the uh, Common App. Great. I will um, kind of take us from here on just how to navigate the Common App. So it's an online portal. So what does that actually mean once you get in um, and start navigating the system? So first to get started, you'll have to create a, an account. This is super easy. It's like creating an account on any other website. You put in your email, a password. You maybe select um, what type of student you are. So think of, you know, if you're a first year student, if you're a transfer student, 
Um, you might have to select that at that point. It might ask you for your date of birth, um, address, phone number, some super basic information. It'll also ask you what year or term you're planning to uh, to start college. So that will also help and and get um, selected in this part of the process. Um, and yeah, once you have once you have an account, you'll be able to to sign in and start navigating the system. Great. So we'll do a, a bit of a walkthrough um, after this, but just to give you like a, a very quick overview. Once you're logged into your account, you're going to see um, several tabs toward the top. Each of them is kind of a different area of the application. Um, you'll have your dashboard, which is really where you can see all the schools on your list and work on your school specific applications. Um, it's under dashboard that you can also select your admissions um, cycle. So if you want to do early action or regular decision, you'll be able to select that there. Um, the My Colleges um, list is similar to your dashboard, but it just keeps a list of all of your different colleges. It'll have all of the application deadlines in one place, nice and easy for you, so you don't lose track of anything. Um, and you can see some other information there. The third tab, the Common App tab, this is kind of the backbone of the application. So this is what gets sent to every school. Um, so it's very basic information, like um, some of your family history, maybe where you put your transcripts there, any test scores. There's an activity log that you can fill out. So these are things in that third tab there that, again, are going to every school that you apply to with the Common App. Um, college search, this is just a nice filtering um, database of all the colleges that are on Common App, so you can use that to select your colleges. And then finally, there's some um, financial aid resources. So this really just explains how does financial aid work? How do you apply for it? Are there scholarship opportunities? Um, this will be kind of a helpful tab um, just for financial aid. So with that super very quick orientation um, kind of in the background, I'm going to share my screen and just kind of show the different parts of the um, Common App system and we can kind of see what that looks like live. So let me pull up the application here. So once you go to the app website, um, clicking sign in, again, this is just this for quick registration page. Um, so if you go to create an account, you'll select what um, you identify as, so first year student, and you'll fill out that super basic information, including um, kind of when you're planning to apply for college. And then once you have the account, you'll be able to log in. And again, this is the, the set of tabs that we just walked through earlier. Uh, dashboard, so this basically shows all of my different schools that I'm working on. Um, I have a lot, and like Anthony said, you can apply to up to 20 with the Common App. So you'll see all of your schools listed here. There's a really helpful um, help section off to the side as well, where you can kind of find answers to some common questions. Clicking into any individual school, you'll be able to see some more selections here on the left-hand toolbar. So you'll see um, some basic college information. It'll surface all the deadlines that you'll need, whether it's early action, regular decision, um, any other pertinent information, application fees, all of their policies. All of this helpful info is right here up at the top in college information. The rest of the tabs here for each individual college are more um, school specific. So under questions, you might have different groupings of questions um, just relating to these different areas. So every school might have a different um, set of questions here, but as, as you go through the application, you'll fill these out um, to the best of your abilities. You'll have a section for recommenders. This is where you can type in the emails of your recommenders and we'll kind of touch on more of that later. And then finally, just a submission um, submission page. So once all the sections are filled out, it'll let you actually submit the application. As mentioned before, the one app, the third tab there, is kind of the basic application that goes to each school. So you'll have to fill in a bunch of different um, information there about you know your address, contact info, family, education. This is where you can kind of put in the different high schools that you um, that you've attended. You could upload um, personal essay. One thing I wanted to touch on was the activities log, um, where you can just kind of upload your different um, extracurricular activities that you're involved in. So any student clubs, any part-time paid work you do, um, all that stuff can go here. And that basically um, gets formatted similar to your resume and it gets sent to the different colleges that you apply to. Um, and finally, college search, this is maybe the last side that I'll just touch on quickly, is you can just type in 
any school here that you want to um, apply to. So for example, if I was interested in Notre Dame, I could just type it in, add it to my list super quickly. If you wanted to do some exploratory research, you could also do um, filters. So you could check out um, schools and just filter on these different criteria, um, see what colleges are available. So as Anthony mentioned, this platform has over a thousand different colleges on it, which is a huge set to narrow down. Um, but once you have them, you'll be able to just add them through this tab here. Finally, financial resources. This is really just kind of a collection of resources that you can read through on your own time. It is, Common App is a separate application than FAFSA, which um, you would use for federal student aid. So just calling that out that they are separate applications, but here you might, so you might get some good resources and help for filling that out. Great. So I know that was a, a quick um, little deep dive into the, the program, but I'm gonna maybe pass it back to Ali for the, um, for the deck. Great. Um, and I think the next section, I will pass it back to Anthony for. Thank you uh, for, for that. So filling out your main uh, application. So many schools are going to collect data about your uh, parents or, or, or uh, legal guardians uh, for, for demographic purposes. Um, so it's best that you have conversations with them uh, and, and parents and uh, uh, families on the call. Uh, make sure that you are having honest conversations with your students about uh, what you uh, do for work, what your uh, employment status is like, your uh, ed education uh, level is as well. Um, one thing about, the, uh, about that um, I want to point out is um, many colleges, uh, one of the pieces of, of information that, that many colleges will track is whether or not a student uh, is a first-gen college student. And so that's defined by the U.S. Department of um, Ed as a student whose parent or legal guardian uh, has, sorry, a, a student who does not have any parent or legal guardian who has attained a uh, four-year uh, bachelor's degree, but on Common App, there is no box to check off. So how do colleges uh, check for that? Um, if on if when they read the uh, a student's Common App, if there is, uh, if there is no bachelor's degree uh, listed for the student's parents or legal uh, guardians, uh, th that is how colleges will track. So it's not something that you would check off, but it but it will be a result of the of the absence of a uh, bachelor's degree, which is how colleges will track whether or not a student is a first-gen college uh, student. That said, you uh, you are able to enter in your uh, your your high school grades and your current courses under under uh, education uh, underneath your own uh, part of the uh, Common App. Uh, some colleges will also ask you to to uh, self-report what your grades are, as opposed to your high school sending in your uh, transcript. You may also self-report scores for, for the SAT or the TT, uh, although uh, some schools uh, are test uh, optional prior to the pandemic starting. Approximately 20% of colleges across the United States were test optional, and then more have, have become so since that, uh, since, since the pandemic started in 2020. Um, and so there is usually a checkbox on the app uh, uh, indicating uh, for you to indicate whether or not you would like to go test uh, optional. And so uh, even if you self-report your score, scores on your main app, you can still choose to report scores to some schools and not to uh, other uh, schools. Um, and this is particularly uh, helpful to keep in mind uh, if your, if your uh, particular test score is higher than that of what the admitted student uh, profile might be from the uh, prior year, or or uh, if your test score is lower than what the admitted student uh, uh, pro profile might be, uh, as as well. Uh, many colleges, um, as far as uh, the main uh, ac activities list is uh, concerned, on on the next slide, your activities list is going to show the admissions uh, committee what you do outside of class. So a few examples could include uh, art clubs, career oriented clubs, sports. If you uh, volunteer as well, um, if you are a part of a um, uh, religious uh, 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 community as well, 
um, if you are part of student uh, government, if you're part of theater or drama. Um, also, if you have if you if you have to work um, or if you have particular uh, family responsibilities at home, uh, where where either of those things, work or family responsibilities, may prevent you from being as involved in your in your high school or your local community as you wish. Uh, please uh, put that on your Common App uh, as well. Colleges do also take that into um, a, a count. Uh, on your uh, Common App, you're able to list uh, the number of um, hours spent on a particular activity each week, uh, the weeks per year, and then also what year you completed those activities, as well as uh, you can check off if the activity was only during the, um, during the uh, uh, school year during school breaks or during summer breaks. And so again, if you've had, if you have to work or have uh, particular family responsibilities at home, make sure that you are um, including those and the hours that you are spending in those uh, as you would any other extracurricular activity uh, as, as well. Uh, as, you, as you are describing what your particular uh, activity is, uh, you'll have about 50 characters to write uh, what your role or what your, um, what your, leadership uh, 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 position was within a particular uh, club or sport or org. Uh, you'll have 100 characters to indicate the, the, the name of the club or, or the org. And then you'll have about 150 characters to describe what exactly that, that uh, activity uh, entailed, anything that you were uh, uh, recognized for within that particular extracurricular activity and what you accomplished as well. Um, all of these character limits are concrete and are set by Common App, uh, so please make sure that you are con concise in uh, indicating those activities. And Common App lets you put up to ten, so they 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 will ask for you to put the put your top ten activities in order of importance to you. Uh, so please keep that uh, in mind uh, as well. And now I will turn it back over to Casey. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. Um, yeah, so that was a great overview of the activities list. In terms of the next um, big portion to talk about, we wanted to go over some um, guidelines and tips on the personal statement. So it's a little confusing in Common App, but there is like the main Common App essay. So this is what we're talking about here. There is a 650 word limit for this essay. This goes to all schools that request it. Aside from this, you might also have school-specific, what we call supplemental essays. And so you'll find that under the school-specific application. And there might be um, different prompts. It might be different lengths. You might have, maybe it's a 100-word limit. Maybe it's 350-word limit. Those are really going to vary by school. Um, so you want to make sure that you kind of fill out both. Um, some schools, most schools, I would say, accept and require the personal statement from Common App. There's um, some schools that don't, so just kind of be aware, it'll tell you in the application um, for that specific school if they take the Common App essay. But in general, you're gonna wanna fill this out and this will probably be your main, um, your main essay work that you do throughout the application process. So 650 words, it sounds like a lot, but it's actually not. When you start writing, um, you'll realize that you can hit that word limit pretty quickly, especially if it's a topic you're excited about, um, which it should be. Um, so it's important to be very like, detailed, very compelling, but also be very concise. When you read it, um, you know, just make sure that each word is significant. Each word needs to be there because it's very easy to hit that limit. Um, and so you just want to be very thoughtful about what you're including. And for the personal statement, um, the best practice that we've, um, you know, can suggest is that it reads more like a narrative. So tell a story. Um, and there's a lot of other advice that we can give you on this that would be worth an entirely separate webinar. But in general, tell a story. Um, don't rehash your activities list. They already have that. Tell a story that um, enhances and supports some of the stuff you've done in your activities. Tell a story that connects the dots um, for the admissions counselor who's reading your application. Um, connect the dots between your personal background, your activities involved in school, your academic work, your future goals. Try to tell something that kind of bridges all those things um, and lets the admissions committee really get to know you. So these should really be experiences that show your character, your passions, your personality. It doesn't have to be a formal, um, super formal essay, but make sure there's um, correct punctuation and grammar. You want your voice to come through, but at the same time, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're telling a story in, in a coherent way. Um, some other kind of general high level tips for this, this area. 
it's good to give some thought into your mission or your purpose. So this doesn't mean exactly what career path you're going to take or what major you'll select, but think about more broadly, what kind of impact do you want to have on the world? Um, and so if your story can tie into that a little bit and make that clear for the admissions committee, um, you're going to be in a really good place with this. Um, okay. And the next slide. Great. So these are the different prompts um, that you have on the Common App, and these change from time to time, but um, these are seven different prompts. I won't read through them all, um, but there's a lot to work with here. So one thing you could do is to think about a story that you would be able to tell um, that could convey all these different parts of who you are as a person, and then try to find the prompt that would match it best. That's one approach you could do. Um, I would also note that the, the seventh prompt, the last one on here, is to share an essay on any topic of your choice. So it doesn't have to fit into any of these prompts specifically. So you are also kind of free to write, um, you know, whatever, whatever you like, as long as it's compelling. The advice that I give people for this one is make sure you're excited about the topic because you're going to get a lot of the, um, a lot of material out of that. And you're going to be able to just really connect with it and have a good time writing it, which is important. Um, I would also say, you know, for any, anything that's appropriate for it, go a level deeper. So don't just tell a story. But how did that story um, make you feel? How did that change your life? Like, what were your reflections on that? Um, just be a little more thoughtful and self-reflective about the stories that you're telling um, and show that to the admissions committee. Great. And I think I will pass it back to Anthony for the next part. Thank you. So outside of your Common App uh, essay, uh, there, there there is a part to the Common App called additional information. So you may want to provide additional information uh, if you would like to address gaps within, within education, disciplinary violations, uh, slips in grades, or, or, or uh, if there's anything else that the admissions committee should know that they will not otherwise know by looking at any other part of your app. So one example might be, if you have a um, uh, interest in uh, STEM, um, but but you might have a C in a in a math class, you can use this part to explain why you got that uh, uh, C. Um, one of the things about college admissions is that you want colleges to to see you, um, and you want to reduce uh, or really e e eliminate how many. Uh, questions uh, the admissions committee may be asking about you. So if you provide that uh, context up front about the C in math, especially if you're interested in STEM, that, that removes a uh, uh, question ab about that. Um, also, uh, starting uh, for students who applied for fall 2021 because of the pandemic starting in 2020, Common App added, in addition to the additional information portion, they also added a COVID-19 uh, uh, impact part as well. So if there are various ways through which the pandemic has impacted what your academic and uh, other aspects of your high school experience have been, you can certainly feel, feel free to add that as, as well. So if there was a, um, a summer college program you wanted to, to partake in, um, if there was a change in the way that you went from in person to online education and then back to in person and then back to online. Uh, you can also indicate that as well if it had an uh, impact on your academics or on other aspects of your of your high school education. As far as rec letters are concerned, uh, th 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 this particular point will focus on um, uh, we will look at both uh, teacher recs and, and counselor recs. Uh, uh, recommenders will not receive a invitation via uh, email for you until you assign them to a college within Common App. Uh, so it's uh, important that that you do that, and then and then in order to assign them, you go to uh, you 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 would go to um, uh, that part within within the screen, and then you would uh, select their their name from the drop down and add them. Uh, uh, add them by using the assign button uh, as well. If your high school uses a program like uh, Naviance or another partner uh, 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 so, so, so software, you won't do that through uh, Common App because as an, uh, it, as an uh, 
example, um, for students who do have Naviance, you're able to link com Common App with Naviance. So for, so for pieces of, of software like that, you will go into uh, Naviance to make the request and your teachers and counselors will send all of your uh, rec letters through, through, through there. And, it's, and it, will, it will go from Naviance to Common App to your, uh, your school. Um, one other note that I do want to make before we uh, talk about uh, the requirements from, from, from schools, Common App will not release any rec letter of rec or, or any other item that your high school counselors or teachers may send on your behalf until you hit the submit button for, for each uh, school. So your deadline could be November 1st and your teachers submit their letters by, no, by October 15th. But if you don't submit your Common App until October 30th, uh, Common App was, is going to hold on to that teacher rec letter until you submit uh, the, um, the app. So that way colleges are not just receiving one rec letter here for you or one transcript for you, but colleges are able to get an entire application uh, file uh, uh, for you. So please keep that in mind. Uh, even if teachers and counselors submit things prior to when you submit your apps, uh, Common App will not release those items to the uh, colleges until you've hit the submit button. And also keep in mind that uh, every college has 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 different rec letter re requirements. Some are going to say uh, one counselor and, and two teacher recs. Some will say one counselor and one teacher. Others will say on, only one of either uh, one. Um, so this is why you have to assign them to a particular uh, school and then ensure that you check each college's uh, re uh, requirements to ensure that you have the right number of, of, of rec letters, uh, as well as uh, do not submit more than what is re required. So if a, if a school only asks for uh, two teacher recs, please don't uh, uh, provide four. Um, so please make sure that you're following the uh, requirements in that regard as well. And then back to the colleges tab for school specific uh, content. So you're able to find requirements for each school under the My Colleges uh, tab, um, which is what you saw a while back when uh, Casey uh, showed live the uh, the uh, coming up, uh, website. So you're able to see uh, deadlines, app fees, if there were any, the personal uh, essay that, that's required, uh, courses and grades, test policy, uh, a, a portfolio if one is required for your academic program, writing uh, supplements as well, which uh, can be uh, short essays or short answer responses that are, that, are, that are specific to each school in addition to your personal essay, as along with our rec letters uh, as well. Make sure that you do complete all supplemental uh, uh, essays and school specific uh, questions before you hit the submit button and be mindful of deadlines. And the last note that I will add is uh, be mindful that there are some colleges that will technically say that they, they do not require a uh, supplement because there will be no additional page on Common App. But if you look on the college specific page, there will be other questions on there that would be comparable to what a um, uh, uh, supplement will, will entail. So please make sure that even if a college says that they do not require uh, a uh, supplement, that you're still checking the their college page within Common App to make sure that you're not missing uh, anything. And at this time, I will turn it over to uh, Haley. Actually, Anthony, if you don't mind, I'd like to add just one more little tip here. Yeah. Um, I've kind of come across this a few times in Common App, but sometimes there will be like an essay or short answer response required for a question that you didn't know required that until you go through and check it. And so what I like to do with students is to have them go through and fill out some of the basic and go throughout the school specific tabs. Mm -hmm. One example is one question might ask your intended major or your intended program that you're enrolling in. And then once you select that from the drop down list, it might have a, a text box pop up that asks for a little bit extra, you know, short answer question or something like that. And so my advice would be to fill out some of that application as you go so that you can get ahead on any hidden um, essays or short answer responses in that way. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of all I wanted to add there, and I will pass it back to Haley. 
All right, awesome. So that wraps up the content that we have for you all. So we'll open up our Q&A section now. Um, so feel free to pop in your question and we'll get to them. Um, first one that we have is how should you decide whether or not you should send in your test scores? And I'm assuming this is for test blind or test, test optional schools. Um, Anthony or Casey, do you have any thoughts on this? Yes. So, um, so one of the things I mentioned earlier is um, is looking at whether or not your score might be higher and or lower than what the profile is. Um, so there are two places where you can uh, look that up if it's not available directly on the admissions website for each school. So one, the U.S. Department, the U.S. Department of Education um, has uh, resources. Uh, three particular programs I use through the Department of Ed are College Map, College Navigator, and College Scorecard. Uh, particularly with the College Navigator, you can look up each uh, any school throughout the United States and see what the middle 50% uh, profile was for, for that uh, in, incoming class. Also, common data set. Uh, you can search for on each school's website. It's much easier to go onto a uh, onto a search engine and type in name of school common data set. And you can see that for the last academic year that includes a lot of information about each school, including what the middle 50% was. So if your if your test score is 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 within or higher than the middle 50%, then you might choose to to submit scores, or or if your or if your test score is on the lower end of that middle 50% or or even lower than what's featured as the middle 50%, then you might choose to not send in scores. Great. Anthony, I'm gonna toss this other question to you. Um, someone heard from another source that calling out a low grade um, might not be a great idea because it draws too much attention to it. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So, I mentioned this earlier and I want to be clear with this. So the personal essay is the only opportunity for you to actually share your voice when you apply. Meaning you can't, you know, co colleges get so many apps. They're not going to call every single student who may have a particular uh, grade that's lower than what their trend is. So if you have a whole bunch of A's and B's, but then in one particular math class, you might have a C, and especially if you're looking for STEM, colleges don't have time to pick up the phone and say, hey, can you tell us what happened with this grade? They're going to go based on what is provided to them in their app. So you want to reduce and you want to get rid of any questions that the admissions uh, uh, committee may have about your, your app. And a question that will come up in committee, if you're looking for STEM, why is there a C in math? Or if you're looking for um, uh, history as your major, why do you have a, a C in um, uh, uh, social studies? Um, so um, so you want to eliminate any question that the admissions committee will have about any of your grades, uh, especially if you have one or two grades that may be out of alignment with the particular trend of, of your grades. So you want to be forthcoming uh, um, and write an additional and write additional information about that. You do not have to write a personal essay about that. You don't even have to write a huge paragraph under the additional info part, but you do want to write a line or two per to provide that context that the admissions committee will not be able to see based on your transcript. Um, the other thing is you could have your high school counselor who would also be writing uh, your counselor rec letters uh, add a line or two in their letter to provide that, that context uh, as well. Um, but I can assure you that if you do not, um, if, you do not draw attention to it yourself when you apply under the additional info part. The admissions committee will have no choice but to solely go based on that particular grade you you you, you received. So it's better for them to have context. Awesome. Thanks for that. Um, Casey, can you answer this um, next question that asks about someone wants to know 
what to do about dual enrollment enrollment with a common application? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I assume it just means kind of where do you load that in or how do you indicate that on your application? Um, and so that will really come into play on that third tab where it says common app. This is like the main application that goes to each school. There is a link on the left-hand side where called education. And so it's in the same place that you would put information about your high school, but you could also select a college or university. Um, and then you can kind of upload the dates that you attended, um, any like um, other courses and things like that. So look for that on the common app tab, um, along with where you put info for your high school. Fantastic. Um, and then is it okay if you're unsure about your major or the school that you want to apply to while you're filling these out? Definitely. It is totally fine if you're unsure. Um, nobody expects you to have it totally figured out at this point. Um, and things change too. So some thoughts on that is that usually when you are actually in college, you don't have to declare a major until maybe the end of your first year or even second year. So you have time to explore um, and take a few classes and see what you like and see what sticks. That being said, there are some programs at some colleges and it is kind of school specific. Um, so do some research and look into this, but the programs might be more niche programs. So think of things like um, performing arts, or I've seen like kinesiology as a program that would be kind of specific where you would have to indicate up front that you're, you're expressing interest in that. Those are, are pretty rare. Um, and so I would just check the school and see what those programs might be. But in general, it's fine if you don't have a major um, in mind. There's often also a, um, an option for undecided or um, yeah, undecided major. Um, I would just maybe trying to find something that fits in with the essay and the activities that you've done and something that kind of creates a compelling story for the admissions committee um, with the understanding that you're not, it's not a final decision. You're not declaring anything right away. It's really just um, to let them know what you're interested in. And also they can start basically from day one, connecting you with the right resources on campus to explore that major. So it really just depends um, on the school, but that would be my advice. Great. Um, Anthony, does it matter if you take if you take more than three to four extracurriculars? Is that an okay amount? Um, should you be taking seven or eight? So 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 the number of extracurricular activities does not matter. Uh, what colleges are paying attention to are the depth of uh, are the depth of in, involvement in your activities, as well as the growth that, that you've had within those activities as, as well. Um, as I mentioned, there may be some reasons why students may not be uh, as involved as they would like to, either because they have to work um, uh, or they may have um, uh, particular responsibilities at, at uh, home. So all of those things are taken into account, um, but, but there is not a set uh, uh, number that colleges are trying to uh, look for uh, re regarding uh, how students should be spending th their time uh, outside of school. So make sure that regardless of the number of activities you're involved with, that you are deeply involved in a variety of ways, um, and that also you can demonstrate um, uh, growth in those activities. The last point I do want to make about extracurricular activities is that extracurricular activities activities should be things that you actually like doing. So please don't pursue 10 different activities to fill up the 10 spots on the Common App just to say that you've done something, but they are not activities that you enjoy and that allow you to pursue the things that you love or to or 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 to contribute to your high school or to your local uh, community in, in some way. Uh, so uh, regardless of the number of activities, they should be things you enjoy, uh, allow you to learn and grow, and also to, to uh, contribute in some way to your high school or, or, or to your local uh, communities. Fantastic. Um... Another question is, if there's a general interest in science, would it be good to share that in some place if it's not a part of your story in other places on the Common app? I can maybe take a stab and then um, Anthony, if you have anything to add, um, feel free to chime in. But a general interest in science, I think that could come through in a few places, right? So if it's not explicitly a part of your story, um, 
it maybe would come through in the recommendations. Um, if you prep your teachers and your counselor, um, maybe you get a recommendation from a science teacher, and I think they can um, emphasize your interest in that area. So part of the application is considering all the different components, making sure the parts agree with each other, but also using them in different ways so that um, you can get these different parts of, of you and your interest um, out there for the admissions committee. Anything, any other thoughts on that, Anthony? Yeah, so, um, and, um, and to remind myself, if there's a general interest in science, would it be good to share that in some place it's not a part of your story? Yes, um, I would say um, students are, students are, um, uh, students are multi uh, faceted um, so so all of the things that you want colleges to know in terms of what you will bring to their campus community both from an academic and a personal uh, standpoint uh, you can certainly choose to uh, share and it may come up in a variety of ways either through your personal essay or your or your extracurriculars or your academics or your rec letters um, but it can show up in a in a number of 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 ways. Perfect. Um, the next question: Should we send standardized test scores after the deadlines end for early decisions specifically? So I would say for um, for most schools uh that should be done uh as you are uh, applying not after um after uh those particular deadlines have 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 passed also it can take college board or the uh act uh time from the from the time that you, you you request your scores to be sent to when it actually arrives at a particular school and gets uploaded into your uh, into your file, so I would say at least four weeks prior to when you would want those scores to arrive at your school and to be included in your application file uh, is when you should make the re request. But that should definitely be done before the uh, deadlines. Great. Um, can the Common App essay be changed after early submission for regular admission? That is a good question. I have not actually come across that before, but I, I mean, I'm just checking it here. I do not think it can, but Anthony, have you seen this before? So yes, when I worked with my niece two years ago, um, you uh she based on my work with her she wrote two complete college uh essays um and, and she used one for the majority of her apps but then um but then a few of her um other apps she decided to go with essay number two so yes you can change uh your personal essay after you submit to one school however um because you are submitting, even though there's only one common app, you're submitting each application to each school every time. So let's just say you have uh, the uh, 10 schools on your list. There's one application, but you're submitting that same application 10 times uh, to each of those 10 schools. So if you choose to, uh, to apply for, 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 for one, school under under early action and you decide to submit essay number one and then for the rest of your nine that are under regular de decision you can go in and take out the old essay that you've done and add in the 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 new one um, but that new essay will only go to the other nine schools it will not um, there will not be a uh, updated essay that will get sent to school number one um, so, so, so that is the, the the nuance to it. You can change your personal essay at any point in time, but it will not impact any previous applications you have already submitted. Great, thanks for that answer. Um, Casey, is it ever appropriate to submit extras, um, like video editing, editing skills, musical performances, um, those types of additional features? 
Yeah, that's a good question. I think this would really depend on the program you're applying to in the school. Some of them might have requirements or a, a place for you to put it. I believe it's an add-in into Common App called Slide Room, um, which I um, frankly haven't worked with before, but there is an add-in, I believe, that should show up on the schools that, that would request or allow a submission like that. So if you see Slide Room or something like Portfolio, that might be a place to upload some of those, um, some of those files. Anthony, have you have you worked with that before? Yeah, so um, so I have worked at um, schools that that do use Slide Room. I do want to also add another caveat to 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 that. Um, one, you should only be submitting uh, things if it's a part if it's a requirement for you to apply. So if you have to um, have to submit a, a a portfolio or 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 a video of your music or or your theater uh, audition. Um, there there are also some schools that will that will also accept auditions and portfolios from non performance arts uh, students who may be applying for uh, scholarships designed for non music uh, majors or for non-art majors, you may also uh, use use that as well. If you don't fall under either of those, if you are not applying for the visual and performing arts, nor are you applying for a scholarship designed for students who are not majoring in the visual and, and, and performing arts, but still have that performing arts lens, uh, please do not submit that. Um, uh, uh, our colleagues within uh, uh, who are on admissions uh, committees are not able to review it. The way that Common App shows up on the college side, it all shows up as a uh, uh, PDF. Um, so there are no uh, there are no uh, 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 hyperlinks that the college reps are, are able to 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 click through. The other thing is that college uh, colleges receive so many apps, thousands and thousands of, of apps. Um, so, so they do not have time to go through the portfolios or the auditions that you would send if it's not a required part of your of the academic uh, portion of your application because you are applying for uh, visual and performing arts, or because as a non-visual performing arts major, there are key there are some key music or theater or art scholarships um, for students like you. So, if you don't fall in either of those two categories, please do not submit those because the faculty will not review them unless you. Are being considered for academics or scholarship, and then the admissions committee is not able to uh, read them. Great. A um, couple more questions, and we have just a couple minutes left here. So, our next question is Do schools prefer students that do in school programs such as Future Farmers of America or Doctors Academy compared to students that just do after school activities? Anthony, any, do you have any thoughts? Yes. So, so there is no uh, preference, uh, whether it's a school-based activity or if it's something outside, or, or uh, you know, if it's a school-based activity like a like a local chapter of the Future Farmers of uh, America or the Doctors Academy versus something um, that's just after school. Your your extracurricular activities list will be will be everything that makes up your life outside of class. So there will be some students they are where they are heavily involved in things within school, but also they may be heavily involved in things uh, outside of uh, school. Uh, so when I was in high school, I was a part of the Spanish club and the high school choir and the school plays, but I was also involved in my church choir as well, which was just as important to put on my apps uh, as the activities I did within school. So when college, uh, when, when college reps read your apps, it doesn't particularly matter how many in-school versus out-of-school out activities you have, but it more so matters, as I mentioned, the, the, the depth of involvement in your in various uh, activities, activities that you enjoy where you can learn and grow and make uh, great um, contributions to your high school or to your local uh, communities. Great. All right. Um, last call for questions um, before we wrap up. Um, another question we have is, can colleges on the college list see the college list on the common app before and after 
the application was submitted? So the answer to that question is yes. Um, so there will be some colleges that may look at a list of which students have started a Common App for them. Um, so Common App does share that information with schools. So then you may get an email from a school that says, oh, you know, like there's still time to apply. Um, they, they've seen that, you know, you, you've begun your Common App and reach out to your admissions officer if there are uh, um, uh, questions you have as you look to complete your um, app. Um, and I would say more uh, colleges do that, one, because they want you to apply, but also two, as much as possible, uh, they want to they want to reduce the they want to reduce the percentage of students who may start a common app, but not submit it. Um, so to answer your question, yes, colleges do see uh, if you've start uh, if you've started a common app for their uh, school. And then they'll also see that data after you um, uh, uh, submit as well. And just to confirm, they can't see the other schools that you're applying to that are also on your list. Right. So th that should not be a concern. Like they won't go in and see you applying to a bunch of other schools. It's really just for them specifically. So just to clarify that. All right. Well. That brings us to the end of our webinar today. Um, Anthony and Casey, I wanna thank you both so much for being a part of this. Um, I know you both gave a lot of fantastic information um, and thank you to everyone who attended. It was great to have you and I hope that you all got something out of this. Um, feel free to reach out to Quad Education. If you have any questions, if you wanna schedule a free consultation, we're here to help and especially as the application season is of really ramping up. Um, we're here to help out. So feel free to go onto our website, fill out a form, give us a call. Um, and I hope everyone has a really fantastic night ahead. Um, and yeah, thank you all for being here. Thanks all, best of luck. Thank you. Bye -bye.